Just when it seemed like small cars would disappear from the U.S. market, a late 50s recession had people rethinking the idea. The smallest American car was still the King Midget, with the Model 3 being introduced in 1957. On a 77-inch wheelbase, it was 117 inches long, and powered by a 9-horsepower Wisconsin single, it cost almost $900. It would be made up until 1970, with almost 5,000 being produced. Nash introduced the Metropolitan in 1954, and it ran until 1962. The car was built by Austin and sold by Nash, Hudson, AMC, and Austin. Its wheelbase was 85 inches, and it was 150 inches long, weighing 1,800 to 1,900 pounds. Initially, it used a 1.2 liter with 42 horsepower and 52 pound-feet of torque, but in 1956 upgraded to a 1.5 liter with 52 horsepower and 77 pound-feet of torque, when prices would be reduced to below $1,500, and sales would be at about 9000 for the year. One was tested with an average of 30 miles per gallon in traffic. The Nash Rambler became the Rambler American in 1958, just over 30,000 of the $1,800 car sold that year. At this point, it was 178 inches long on a 100-inch wheelbase and weighed 2,500 pounds. The 3.2-liter, 196 cubic inch straight six produced 90 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque, making for a 16-second 0-60 to 60 and a top speed of 85. Studebaker decided to focus on smaller cars, starting with the Lark of 1959. It was on a 109-inch wheelbase, or a 113-inch wheelbase for the wagon and a Conoliner taxi. Weight ranged from 2,600 to 3,200 pounds, and regular models were 175 inches long. Prices started at about $2,000, and first-year sales were roughly 130000 Base engine was a 90-horsepower, 170-cubic-inch flat-6. The option, a 259-cubic-inch, 4.2-liter V8 that had 180 to 195 horsepower, and was capable of 60 in 10 seconds. Small for the U.S. at the time, it would be considered quite large for most parts of the world, such as in Britain, where they had the three-wheeled Bond minicar Mark E. Wheelbase was only 66 inches, and it was 132 inches long, weighing less than 700 pounds. Power came from a 200cc two-stroke with 9 horsepower and 12 pound-feet of torque. Backed by a four-speed, it could do 45 miles an hour. Less than 1,200 were made. The Mark III, IV, and V Regal helped carry Reliant through the late 50s. On a 76-inch wheelbase, they were 135 inches long and weighed less than 1,000 pounds. The Austin 750cc inline four made 18 horsepower and 28 pound-feet of torque, meaning the car could do almost 60 and get there in just over 30 seconds while Austin themselves upgraded the A30 into the A35 for 1956. At 137 inches long on an 80-inch wheelbase, the saloon and estate were joined by a ute and a van, although fewer than 500 of the utes were made. At 950 cc's, the engine produced 34 horsepower and 50 pound-feet of torque, giving it a top speed that was just over 70, and it got to 60 in under 28 seconds. The small cars from Standard included the 8 and 10. They were 144 inches long on an 84-inch wheelbase, with a starting price under 500 pounds, with either an 800 or 950 cc inline 4. The 1956 Super 10 produced 35 horsepower and 46 pound-feet of torque, and tested to almost 70 miles an hour. It was able to reach 60 in a little over 31 and a half seconds, and got nearly 30 miles per gallon. The four-door Ford Prefect 100E ran until 1959. It was 152 inches long on an 87-inch wheelbase, used a 1.2-liter side valve inline four with 36 horsepower and 53 pound-feet of torque. One was tested at over 70 miles an hour and getting to 60 in 28 and a half seconds, while getting over 30 miles per gallon and costing less than 700 pounds. More than 100,000 were made. The Morris Minor carried on for quite some time as the 1000 starting in 1956. It had an 86-inch wheelbase, was 148 inches long, and weighed 1,700 pounds. Using the Austin 950cc engine, although with a 37 horsepower rating, top speed was 70 and 60 took 17 seconds. The Hillman Minx got updated styling for 1956. 
It was 161 inches long on a 96 inch wheelbase, weighing roughly 2,200 pounds. The 1.4 liter inline four produced 51 horsepower and 70 pound feet of torque, taking 23 and a half seconds to get to 60 and topping out just above 75. Singer introduced the Gazelle in 1956. It weighed 2,300 pounds on a 96 inch wheelbase and was 164 inches long. The 1500 cc inline four produced 53 horsepower and 77 pound feet of torque. Tested at nearly 80 miles per hour, 60 took about 23 seconds, and it got roughly 28 miles per gallon, priced just over a thousand pounds. The Vauxhall Victor, introduced in 1957, was supposedly a large family car. On a 98-inch wheelbase, it was only 167 inches long, and used a 1.5-liter inline four with 55 horsepower. One was tested to 75 miles an hour, and to 60 in 28 seconds, while getting 26 miles per gallon. The Woolsey 1550 replaced the 444 in 1956. It was still on a 102 inch wheelbase, but was slightly longer at 173 inches, and now used a Morris 1.5 liter inline four with 55 horsepower, backed by a manumatic. The Sunbeam Rapier arrived in 1955 on a 96 inch wheelbase. They were 160 inches long. The 1400cc engine produced 63 to 68 horsepower allowing the car to be tested at speeds over 85 miles an hour and getting 25 miles per gallon with a 0 to 60 under 21 seconds. Nearly 7,500 Series 1s would be made. In France, the Vespa 400 car was introduced in 1958. With a 67 inch wheelbase, it was 112 inches long and weighed just over 800 pounds. The two-stroke twin produced 13 horsepower, and the GT package upgraded it from a three-speed to a four-speed. They sold nearly 12,000 the first year, with a top speed just over 50 and getting 46 miles per gallon. The Citroen 2CV got a new 425cc 13 horsepower engine, raising top speed to 50. On a 95-inch wheelbase, it was 152 inches long and weighed 1,300 pounds, with some claiming it could get 80 miles per gallon. The Renault Dauphine had an 89-inch wheelbase, was 155 inches long, and weighed 1,400 pounds. The 850cc inline four made 32 horsepower and 48 pound-feet of torque for a 36 and a half second zero to 60, and a top speed over 65. Peugeot's 203 was on a 102-inch wheelbase, was 171 inches long, and had a 1,300cc engine. The 48 horsepower and 66 pound-feet of torque moved the 2100 pound car to 60 in 26 seconds and speeds near 75 miles an hour. The Panhard Dyna Z had a 101 inch wheelbase, was 180 inches long and weighed 1600 pounds, except the bigger pickup version. The 850 cc Boxer Twin came with 42 to 50 horsepower. A 50 horsepower four speed version did 60 in 21 and a half seconds and topped out above 85. The Simca Aronde was 162 inches long on a 96 inch wheelbase and weighed 2,000 pounds. Its 1300 inline four offered 47 to 56 horsepower versions. A base model costing just over 900 pounds was tested to over 80 miles an hour, reaching 60 in 24 seconds and getting 27 miles per gallon. The more powerful version was more than six seconds quicker. The German Messerschmitt cabin roller was now the KR200 upgraded to 190 cc sack single with 10 horsepower and 11 pound feet of torque. Still on an 80 inch wheelbase, it was 111 inches long and 500 pounds and it could do 55 miles an hour. 1957 saw the introduction of the Trabant P50. Its 500 cc twin produced 18 horsepower. It was on an 80 inch wheelbase, was 132 inches long and weighed less than 1400 pounds. More than 20,000 would be made before the end of the decade. The Glas Gogo Mobile T Sedan and TS Coupe were on a 71 inch wheelbase, with the T being 114 inches long and the TS being 120 inches long. Offered as a 250, 300, or 400 with 14, 15, or 19 horsepower. The BMW 600, introduced in 1957, was essentially just a stretched Isetta with a back seat and a bigger engine. Pumping out 20 horsepower, it was 114 to 116 inches long on a 67 inch wheelbase and weighed 1,200 pounds. 
nearly 35,000 were made. The NSU Prince 1 of 1958 had a 600cc twin with 20 horsepower, which gained 10 horsepower as the Prince 2 a year later. They were 124 inches long on a 79 inch wheelbase. For 1955, Lloyd upgraded to 600 cc's and four strokes, providing 25 horsepower. It could almost reach 60 if given nearly a full minute, and the 1200 pound car was 132 inches long on a 79 inch wheelbase. The Volkswagen Beetle had already sold a million vehicles globally by the late 50s. With a standard 34 horsepower, it could exceed 70 miles an hour and get 35 miles per gallon, and get to 60 in 27 and a half seconds. The DKW F91 went by several names, including 900 and Sonderklaas, and ran until 1959. Wheelbase ranged from 93 to 96 inches, length from 164 to 170 inches, and weight from 1900 to 2100 pounds. The 900cc twin spun the front wheels with 34 horsepower and 51 pound-feet of torque, reaching 60 in 39 seconds and a top speed near 70. The Wartburg 311 of 1956 was developed from the East German remains of DKW, initially with a 900cc two-stroke inline three with 40 horsepower. The 2100-pound car was 169 inches long on a 97-inch wheelbase. Opel's P1 record came out in 1957. It was 167 inches long on a 98-inch wheelbase and weighed 2,000 pounds. Its 1.5 liter had 51 horsepower and 79 pound-feet of torque, reaching 60 in 23 and a half seconds on its way to just over 75 miles an hour. The last Goliath, the 1100 of 1957, was rebadged as a Hansa from 58 to 61. With the 89-inch wheelbase and being 160 inches long, it weighed about a ton. Available in 40 horsepower and a sporty or 55 horsepower Luxus version, Top speed was 85, and 60 took 18 seconds. While the Borgward Hansa Isabella was 173 inches long on a 102-inch wheelbase and weighing 2,200 pounds. It had a 1,500 inline four with 60 to 75 horsepower and did 60 in the high 15s with a top speed over 90. The small Mercedes-Benzes were the 180 and 190. They used a 104-inch wheelbase were roughly 176 inches long and weighed 2,500 to 2,700 pounds. The 1.8 liter was available in 58 to 74 horsepower gas versions or a 46 horsepower diesel version. And the 1.9 liter had 84 horsepower and 107 pound-feet of torque and did 60 in the high 16s. In Italy, Fiat's new 500 of 1957 had a rear engine twin a 479cc unit with 13 horsepower. And starting in 1958, a 499cc sport model with 22 horsepower. It had a 72 inch wheelbase, was 117 inches long, and weighed just over a thousand pounds. A sport could do nearly 65 and got to 60 in about 45 and a half seconds. The Lancia Appia second series appeared in 1956. It had a new, more powerful Hemi Head 1100cc V4 with 43 horsepower and 56 pound-feet of torque. They were 158 inches long on a 99-inch wheelbase and weighed 2,000 pounds. Top speed was 80 and 60 took less than 23 seconds. Over 22,000 were made. Alfa Romeo's Giulietta Berlina of 1955-58 to 58 used a 1.3 liter with 52 horsepower and 69 pound-feet of torque giving it a 17 and a half second zero to 60 and a top speed near 85. They were 157 inches long on a 94 inch wheelbase and weighed 1900 pounds. In Sweden, Saab gave us the 9.3 for 1956. It had a 750 cc 33 horsepower two stroke. Wheelbase was 98 inches, length 158 and weight 1700 pounds. 53,000 would be made. Volvo saw a number of upgrades in 1958 with the PV544, including a one-piece windshield and a four-speed manual. The 1.6-liter engine produced 84 horsepower and 87 pound-feet of torque for a 95-mile-an-hour top speed. It was 175 inches long on a 102-inch wheelbase and weighed 2,100 pounds. Seat began building the 600 in Spain in 1957 
under license from Fiat. They were on a 79 inch wheelbase, 131 inches long, and used a 633cc engine with 19 horsepower, weighing 1300 pounds. Costing 60,000 Spanish pesetas, they were slower than a smaller 500, not quite reaching 65 miles an hour, and taking more than 54 seconds to get there. The Czechs had the Skoda 400 series, the 440, 445, and 450, ran from 1955 to 1959. They made more than 75,000 of the base 440 with its 40 horsepower 1100, just under 9,400 of the 1200 cc 45 horsepower 445, and just over 1,000 of the sporty 50 horsepower convertible 450s. Top speed was around 75 to 80, and the 445 was the quickest version, taking over 24 seconds to reach 60. Unlike its predecessors, the Soviet Moskvich 402 was a very modern car for the time. There was even a rare four-wheel drive version sold as the 410. The 407 upgraded the car from a 34 horsepower 51 pound foot of torque 1.2 liter to a 1.3 liter with 44 horsepower and 64 pound feet of torque, allowing it to reach 70 miles an hour and get to 60 in just over 32 seconds. In Japan, Daihatsu's three-wheeled midget of 1957 was called an auto rickshaw. Initially with an 8 horsepower, 250 cc two-stroke single, and in 1959, it would gain one horsepower and doors. The Subaru 360 weighed as little as 900 pounds. Using a 71-inch wheelbase, it was 118 inches long. Introduced in 1958 with 16 horsepower, Subaru claimed it could get up to 66 miles per gallon. Datsun's 1000, or 210 series, got a modern overhead valve engine for 1957, increasing output to 34 horsepower and 48 pound-feet of torque for a top speed just over 60, taking just over a minute to get there. It was on an 87-inch wheelbase, was 152 inches long, and weighed 2,000 pounds. Toyota introduced the Crown in 1955. It had a 100-inch wheelbase, 167-inch length, and weighed 2,500 to 2,700 pounds. Its 1.5-liter 4 produced 60 horsepower and 80 pound-feet of torque. It was considered a large car in Japan, although not so much in the U.S., where nearly 300 were sold in 1958 with a starting price of $2,200. But the American small car market would soon be expanding. So until we look at those, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe. Mm-hmm.